In this screencast, we're going to look at resizing a photo or resizing an image. By way of exa example, we're going to uh, create a banner image for a website. So what we're looking at on screen here is one of the scrolling banner images that are currently used on the LIT website. So let's push that out of the way and see how we would create a long, thin, rectangle image like this uh, for a website. So uh, what we'll work with is uh, this image here. It's an image that I like, nice uh, shallow depth of field, nice soft background, and the camera is what jumps out at me. So I'm thinking here this might make uh, a useful banner image for some sort of media site. Um, so let's assume the required image dimensions are 1260 across by 240 down. That happens to be the required size for one of the WordPress um, themes. Uh, so let's assume we were working to that theme. So how would we create, how would we convert this image here uh, into a 1260 pixel across by 240 pixel down image? Well, let's look and see what size it is currently. Uh, if we, we can look at that by going up to the image menu. So image, image size, and we can see that it's 5,616 pixels by 3,744. 3, so a lot bigger and deeper, if you like, as well than, than the type I'm looking for, the shape I'm looking for. So to make the size I want, I'm going to use the crop tools. We have all our tools down the left hand side here. This one here with the square with the overlapping corners uh, is called the crop tool. If I click on that to activate it, uh, I'm then going to we'll just clear that. So let's say we're using this for the first time. I would type in my width here. So in my case, I want 1260 pixels. So I put in 1260 and I put in space PX for pixels. For my height, I want 240 pixels. So I put in 240. And this time I'm going to, I'm not going to put in the space. So I'll just put in PX. Uh, and when I click on the next box, Photoshop, is clever enough to know that I, I forgot the space and it puts in the space between 240 and px for pixels. So I've got my width and my height and we don't specify resolution or it doesn't make any difference. There's no relevance to it when you're specifying pixels. So when you're working with pixels, you just fill in width and height. And given that I've now set that as the cropping width and height, when I try and crop the image by diagonally dragging the crop tool, it's constrained to be a certain shape, a particular ratio of long, narrow, rectangle. So I've dragged it across the screen, um, but that's not necessarily the, the, the view that I want. So what I'm going to do is move my mouse inside the crop area, slide it down to the camera, which is what I'm really interested in. And we'll get about that much of a camera and we'll maybe crop that. To apply the crop, I've got to go up here and select the tick tool here which commits the current crop. In other words, it accepts that uh, cropping shape. And when I do that, the image resizes down. Now it looks tiny here, but that's just relative to the very large image we had previously. So I'm going to zoom in again. I'll, I'll use the shortcut Control-0, which maximizes the image in the current working space. So Control-0. And there's my image. I haven't made it, I haven't, by, by doing that Control-0, I haven't changed the number of pixels. That's defined as 1260 by 240 um, because that's what I put into the crop uh, dimensions. I've just made it a little bit bigger so that we can see what we're working at. So a reasonably nice image, but I might like to give it a bit more um, sort of an artistic feel. So various filters I could run on it is, is one of the easiest ways of doing that. Let's close that there. I'm not interested in that. Um, uh, so I'm going to try and use one of the built-in filters. Uh, so I'll put an artistic glow on it. So I'll go into filter and I go into artistic. Actually not artistic. The one I'm looking for is, which one is it? Blur, blur strokes, distort. It's distort actually. So filter, distort, diffuse, glow. And that gives it a sort of a glow effect. We, we see a close up here of part of it on the left hand side of the screen. Um, uh, there are parameters over here which we can adjust um, to change the effect, the degree of the effect that increases the graininess. I'm going to go with values that I sometimes use here, 4, 8 and 12, but you should experiment with ones to see how they work with your image. 
and we can slide over other bits of the image to see how it's working there. And I kind of like that glow effect on the right hand side there. It, uh, it makes the, the people less recognizable, but you still have figures there. So there's there's action happening there. Uh, so I'm going to say OK to that with my 4, 8 and 12, which aren't uh, particularly special figures. They're just I think they work fairly well for this image. So I'll OK that and the glow effect is now added to my image. Um, uh, I could leave it at that. I could add some text. Sometimes you see text in the banner image. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll add just one or two more effects. I'm going to add uh, a lens flare just to give it an, another little bit of, um, I suppose, artistic uh, appeal. Uh, but again, artistic appeal is very subjective. So uh, it's it's what, what, what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. So this time I'm going to go into filter and I'm going to use uh, a thing called, where is it, under filter render lens flare. Uh, and this this is a way of mimicking the flare you sometimes get on a lens uh, when you're shooting into a bright light or into the sun. So there's a little crosshair over here, which I'm going to drag across. Uh, I'm going to make my flare occur over here where this chap was originally holding a cup of coffee. Uh, I, have a, I have a setting here. This is the extent of the flare, if you like. I'm going to stick with around about 80% there. I'll apply that. And we see a, a little bit of flare coming up here. And we see some mirrored flare over here, um, which is the type of flare you'll sometimes get uh, with, with a certain type of lens when, when shooting into a light. So I'd be reasonably happy with that um, uh, as my uh, banner design. I might want to put text on it. We might do that as a separate screencast. So for the moment, I'll just save that. So I will go into File, Save As, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG file. I would uh, use a, re a meaningful name here. I might call this uh, Camera Banner. And it's a good idea maybe to put the pixel dimensions as well. So that if you're looking at these afterwards, you can figure out what size was this image here? Or what, what size was it made in the editing process? So I'm putting 1260x240. Those were the dimensions, the dimensions I used when I cropped it. Uh, and it's a JPEG. I've gone for the JPEG option. So I'll save. When you save in JPEG, uh, you are prompted for a quality setting. Higher quality to the right means larger file sizes. Lower quality to the left means smaller file sizes. I'm going to go with a size of about um, four, uh, sorry, three there, quality I should say of three, which gives me a relatively small file. I don't really need high quality in a banner image. So I'm going to say OK to that. And that file is saved. I would be reasonably happy with that end result. So just by way of uh, recall, we started with an image like this and we resized it using the crop tool to specific dimensions, which we put up here uh, in the crop uh, uh, specifications window and we finished up with a banner image like that which we could use on a website.